Yeah. Um, so tell me about um, your uh, studies and. Uh... Ah, well, early on, I, you know, like the first real, but there were two theater things that happened in, uh, when I was a kid mm -hmm. that I think uh, really made a profound impression on me. Yeah. One was uh, uh, we went to the Red Barn Theater, which was a summer stock company right. up on the lower end of Lake Simcoe, mm -hmm. uh, and we saw a production of Skin of Our Teeth, the Thornton Wilder play, and, uh, about a, a, a family that starts from the beginning of time that's the, is, uh, and uh, comes to the present. And uh, it was the, that, I was so amazed that a piece of theater could actually uh, be that profound mm -hmm. and, and be able to sum up the human condition in that way. The other one was Stratford. The, uh, the second year of Stratford's existence, uh, I went to uh, see um, Oedipus Rex, oh. which I liked because it had my name in it, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we had this, uh, you know, it was, it was still the tent. Right. And uh, the idea of the fanfares and the, and then walking into the tent and uh, the uh, incense bearers, uh, fill the tent with this brown uh, aromatic smoke mm -hmm. and then you see these huge figures in their masks right. uh, and their platform uh, sandals, I forgot what the Greek name is for that, those, yeah. uh, emerging out of this, this fog. Um, and it, I was taken immediately into, into that. Uh, Douglas Campbell played Oedipus that year. Right. Um, wow. And uh, it was uh, uh, the most amazing uh, thing that, that just captured my whole imagination and my, my sense of the idea of ritual. Mm -hmm. of, uh, and uh, uh, so from then on, I, you know, I really loved, I, I, when I was in high school, I'd go to the Aurelia Library and I'd read all the plays of Shaw and Shakespeare and I'd, do parts to myself, and I'd assume Olivier-esque uh, voices, yeah, of course. <laughs> kind of. of course. Uh, uh, um, and then I was in the in the plays at, in high school, and uh, mm -hmm. I even got to direct uh, one in the my final year that went to the uh, the uh, high school drama festival. Um, uh, so I was Mr. Drama there, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to McMaster, and I continued to do the same thing, sort of act and and direct. And mm -hmm. um, but I I couldn't write plays. I tried to write plays. Uh, really? Uh, uh, well, you couldn't. In they well, all looked fake, really? like I, I was uh, fake classic or fake right. whatever. Uh, so the first play I wrote, uh, I. I I decided I would take theology and uh, mm -hmm. that I would become a Baptist minister, you see. Right. Uh, but why I Why did you hope, decide that? I, uh, why did you decide I, that? Why did I decide that? Yeah. Well, it was part, it was, it, it was it parallel to my interest in theater. Right. Um, okay. I, I would get to write sermons and... Uh, and tell stories. And I had, tell stories and I had this, uh, th this real sense of, uh, like I... I did the the evangelical Baptist thing. I went up mm -hmm. during the evangelical call at mm -hmm. a, a service in a, in mm -hmm. uh, in the church in Aurelia. Yeah. So uh, it, it wasn't that I I've never dismissed that part of my experience. You mm -hmm. see. Uh, so, but it was I was hoping I would find some way. You can see that if those are my two formative theatrical experiences. Mm -hmm that there's immediately something um, profound, something deep that, that, that you, um, you, you, uh, uh, it just, you just can't dismiss. Yeah. Um, theatrically or re 
religiously. Right. 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 Uh, and I was hoping to find some way of, of maybe doing a theatrical career within the church institution. So did you write a play within a... Well, uh, by, uh, when I got to the uh, end of my Divinity College mm -hmm. uh, experience at McMaster, uh, I persuaded the powers that were uh, mm -hmm. to let me write a play as my thesis. Right. Uh, so I wrote a play called The Invitation, mm -hmm. uh, which was about a a little old man uh, living in an apartment with a very domineering, uh, dictatorial, oppressive woman. Now, I, this may say something about what kind of relationship I was going through at that time <laughs> with, with the, the girlfriend I had then. Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, you, t you, you get your images from real life, yeah, don't you? Absolutely. Uh, she's so, going to sue you as well if she's on but, the play. But basically, to, to step back a little bit from <laughs> what my personal life, uh, what I was trying to get at <laughs> was um, the, the notion that in, in terms of faith, I felt that what God was doing was issuing you um, an invitation uh, mm -hmm. to, um, to God's love. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, uh, the phone rings. It's never rung before. And it's an invitation to the old man to attend a party. Mm -hmm. And this allows him to stand up to this domineering old woman mm -hmm. who feeds him dog food right. and treats him in an infantile way. Mm -hmm. So under that, there's a, there's a, a real kind of theology, mm -hmm. uh, a theology that's, um, uh, that's about acceptance mm -hmm. and uh, uh, about... Um, uh, offering people a, a courageous way to live. How is it received? Well, um, I passed. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. And you also said that it was in the style of Ionesco, is that correct? It, yeah, it was, it was in the style of Ionesco, because I, uh, I, I was fond of that. I directed, uh, I'd, uh, directed the bald soprano and, uh, right. uh, while well, I was at university. and. Uh, <coughs> And I liked the I liked uh, the absurdists, right. uh, and I thought this would be a good way to tell parables, right? Right, of course. Uh, so uh, yeah. So then I decided to uh, that I had been at some workshops in theater and religion, so I went uh, to uh, Union Theological Seminary, a very prestigious uh, uh, school in New York City, and uh, yeah, just at the Columbia, uh, where the Columbia campus is, mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, to, uh, they had at that point uh, two or three people who were um, doing the the theater and theology sort of uh, routine. Uh, Bob Seaver, who was a, a, a Broadway director. Mm -hmm. uh, um, then uh, they also had a, a theologian, Tom Driver, uh, who uh, was a theater critic in New York City, right. as well as a theologian. Right. Um, Interesting. And uh, they had um, a, a scenic uh, designer. Um, they had Bob Seaver brought in a dancer from the village to work with the with the ministerial students uh, wow. in. Uh, in terms of uh, of their speech classes, so you can't you can't have vocal without physical, right? right? Yeah. And so uh, that was fun watching this uh, hmm. uh, it, this uh, willowy uh, modern dancer, um, Carolyn Bilderback was her name, and she oh, okay. uh, uh, and all of this, the the. Uh, the minister, ministerial students had to take her course as part that was laid on. And of course, a lot of them were very cerebral and they sort of, what is, what's going yeah. on with this? Yeah. She had them doing creative dance and wow. movement and stuff like that as part of their speech classes. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so 
though, so there was, it was a real uh, uh, kind of hotbed at that point. 